Hey everybody, it's JK Walker with ECU Hero, and today we're going to show you the basics of bench flashing. This is a question we get a lot because everybody says, hey, we know ECU Hero can work via OBD to do the GPEG 3s, the GPEG 2s, the GPEG 2 As, but what about if I need to do it on the bench? What if I don't have the car around? Well, of course you can still do it on the bench, but there's some basics you need to follow. There's different kind of bench harnesses, right? We can get a pre-made setup like this here. You know, we can have a pre-made setup like this. Or we could use something that's more universal like this. So as what we're going to do is we're going to cover some of these and we're going to go over the pros and cons of each one and tell you some things that you need to watch out for. So the first one we're going to talk about is the Go Diag, right? And this is the GT100 Plus, and the difference in the GT100 and the Plus is when they went to the Plus, they added the amperage here, right? So we're going to turn this on, and you'll see it's got LED lights, and we don't have it hooked up to anything, so it's not doing anything. But we're just going to go over kind of what, you know, what is what here. You've got a power button. You've got a 12 volt, and this has a little 30 beside of it. And then you have a 12 volt, and it's got a 15 beside of it. Um, we're not using the power adapter that's supplied with it. I will go ahead and tell you. We'll cover power adapters here in a minute. Throw the power adapter that comes with this away in the trash. It's junk. All right? So, on one end here, you have an OBD cable. Right? You can plug this into the vehicle. And then you can actually have this where you can plug your scan tool in. So this is designed to be a breakout box. And it's a bench flashing tool as well. Now, have I used this as a breakout box? Yes, I have. Would I recommend using this as a breakout box? No, I wouldn't. Because these LED lights here. So for 95% of the things you'll ever program, these LED lights are not going to cause an issue. But there are some modules that are going to become an issue for using when you're using these LED lights. They can clip your voltage, they can cause interference and things like that. And lately, you know, anybody that's came to me and said, hey, I've got a problem bench flashing anything, usually when I ask them what they're using, it is a go diag. Another issue that with this box that they don't have is there's really no terminating resistor. The only way that you can, you know, re put resistance on the network is basically you've got to take the stuff that comes with it, right? And you dig through this bag and there is a resistor in here. So you've got this resistor. Well, now we need to take two of these, you know, or and, and stick them in 6 and 14 and try to, you know, get terminating resistance. And we'll talk about terminating the resistance a little bit more later on in this video. But this is basically what you would need to do in order to get, you know, some kind of terminating resistance on the network. Um, you know, these these do work. They work well. They work for a lot of modules. Um, it's just, you know, 5% of the stuff you're going to encounter issues with and you're going to play around and play around. And then realize, hey, it, it might be my go diag. But let's go through and kind of just show you what exactly it is that these wires are. Um, so brown is going to be ground, which I always thought was odd because you think black would be ground, right? Um, here's a re REL ground, a ground, another ground, right? Then we have our 12 volt 30. And then if we look through here, we're going to find one of these, another one red. There it is, 12 volt 15. So is what I do is I designate one of the two for ignition and one of the two for, um, you know, constant hot. So say make your 30 constant hot or your 15 ignition or vice versa. And you'll actually plug those into there, right? Now, if you look here, the yellow wires, these are actually all corresponding pins of the OBD. So OBD pin 11, if you look here, there's nothing there, right? because there's probably not a protocol currently that's on it or that they've got listed on here. But I do think Honda maybe or somebody, or maybe Ford, somebody I know uses pin 11 for something. So you would have OBD pin 11. You would actually use this right here to do it. But most of the time is what you're going to use is pin 6 and 14, which are going to be your can high. And then where's, I think it's white is can low, right? So this is kind of where you got to watch out is if you're looking at a diagram and that diagram has the wire colors different, 
Don't hook this can high up as your ground because, of course, you're going to have issues. You always want to go by what the wire says, not by the wire colors. So that's something to watch out for these. So is what you would do is you would basically take your module, right, with one of these, and then you would just take your module, and then you would look at your diagram, and then you would go and you would press these on to the corresponding pin that it goes. Now, one thing I will tell you to watch out for is if this is a brand new Go Diag, is you want to go ahead and make sure that we we split this some, that we stick a tool in here or something, and that we actually get this thing spread out so that it'll work really well. Now, other than that, there's not much to the Go Diag. This one here, like I said, it is a good box. I use it a lot of the time. Um, you know, and I, and I do use it, but I have ran into problems where I have to take this box off the network and go with something else in order to do that. Go Diac has some other cables as well. They've got like this one here. This is the GT 107. This is another bench flashing device. But once again, another problem that this one has is there's really no way to terminate the can. You know, you've got to add a resistor in for can termination. So you're going to have to try to stick it on some pins or something down here and it becomes a fiasco. Um, let's see what else we got. This is probably a cool one here. Uh, I've had this one for a while. This one actually has a switch on it. This one here is probably my favorite, and this used to be my go-to before I actually got you know, other stuff to bench flash with, um, like bench harnesses, is I would use this one because it had 60 ohms and 120 ohms right there. So you could swap it easily between the two and add as much as resistance as you need. So now let's talk about bench harnesses and another way we can do this. Now, this right here is a bench setup that is not universal, right? Because while it is universal in the sense that we can get different connectors and we can change this out and everything else, you know, this is something that's more tailored for bench work. And if you're going to do a lot of bench work, well, this really is the way to go. Even though there is a higher cost of entry, this is going to be the easiest possible way that we can actually get into bench flashing. Um, and, and if you're doing it in a scale, because here's what you have to understand. Just like ECU Hero saves you time, right? Because there's other tools out there that can do it, and we never said there wasn't. But just like ECU Hero saves you time from having to pop the back off the ECM and everything, this here will cut down on your time it takes to bench flash PCMs. And so if you're bench flashing PCMs on a daily basis, day after day, you're doing PCM after PCM, well then, this right here is going to save you so much time that the money really makes sense to just go ahead and get it, right? So this here is from Custom ECM. The one we have here is for a GPEG-3. He's labeled it GPEG-2 29-bit because uh, that's actually what HP Tuners identifies some of these ECMs as, but this is a GPEG-3. So is what you could basically do instead of having to pin that out is you just take this connector here and we just put it on the ECM and we slap it there and we're good to go. We've got a switch for battery and we've got a switch for ignition. And on the side, this here, this model is going to have a switch for can termination. So therefore, we don't have to try to fool with putting this little resistor between pin and 614 because this tool already has it built in that we can do a data flick of a switch. So of course, we don't have to look up diagrams or anything. We just slap this on. Now here's what I will tell you. On these ECMs, when you have a GPEG-3 like this, the green connector, all of these are the same. So all of the GPEG-3s are the same. If you get them from Custom ECM, he'll get you taken care of there. But also, your GPEG-2 connector here. So your GPEG-2 connector is going to be the same on all GPEG-2s and 2As are going to use the same connector. So that's only, you know, you those two connectors there you could have. Now let's say you wanted to do NGCs. Now he's got two different versions of it. This is the CAN only version. So this does all the NGCs uh, that are CAN based right here, right? Or you can actually get one that'll fit his 16 pin box that will do all the SEI and CAN bus ones. Then we go over here, there's a GPEG-1. He's got a GPEG-1 that he can do. So we can do the GPEG-1s. That's another ECM we cover with ECU Hero. GPEG-4, he's got the GPEG-4s as well. Connectors for those. 
and uh, the GPEC 4, well, the 4 and the 4LM. So you have those connectors. So when you go with bench harnesses, it is a little bit more costly up front, but the time savings is really, really where you're going to, uh, where you're going to save money. Because time is money. So if we can add up the 15 minutes it takes me to, to look up that diagram to, uh, and to bench this thing and to actually uh, plug it in and all that stuff, well then that 15 minutes over time of doing this PCM, say 100 times, that turns into a lot of money and a lot of revenue that your business is losing because you're spending time doing things the hard way, right? So it's always good to look into something like these bench connections right here these are from customecm.com uh, James makes these they're a really good product um, and they're really affordable too Benchforce also has these but you're gonna pay a lot more money for Benchforce if you've already got Benchforce though I believe he does make a Benchforce uh, adapter that goes from Benchforce to that and you know so that's that now we're gonna show you about um, we'll talk about our what charger we use or a power supply that we use, and then we're gonna move on to uh, can termination. All right, so if you've ever seen one of my videos, you've probably seen me take a power supply out of a tool and actually break it in half on the desk or something like that. And all one of the indicators you always kinda of wanna look for in a power supply is the weight, right? If you get something that really doesn't have any weight to it, well, that's a good indicator right there that it has cheap components in it or it's just missing a lot of components on the board. When we're programming ECUs, one thing that is our the enemy, right, is AC voltage. So if you have an AC voltage bleed in, that's the enemy of programming. As you know, that's why we don't use the old roll around battery chargers that are in shops because they have a lot of interference in them. So it's what we do is we get something like this. Now I get these on Amazon. This is a Belker. Uh, I'll put you there, the model number. There we go, you should be able to see the model number there. So if you look at this though, this has different voltages. And a voltage that I've found that works really well is 13.5. It's not too low and it's not too high. I flash thousands of modules with this specific power supply here. I buy a bunch of these and I use them all over the place. They're good power supplies. I would not you know, hesitate to recommend this to you. If you're using a GoDiag or you're using any other product out there um, and it maybe comes with a 12 volt charger, go ahead and step it up with this 13 and a half if you're doing flashing for automotive. And you're probably going to get better results when you step that voltage up. Because a lot of these like EEPROMs and things like that, they're voltage dependent when, you know, things are happening. So therefore, if you have better voltage, you're going to be better. But you don't want to go too high. You don't want 15, 16 volts. You know, that 13.5 I have found is the sweet spot for these. Just to add here, because we're going to use this in our demonstration, right, is I said, you know, probably not a good idea to use the Go Diag for a breakout box, especially if you're trying to diagnose anything in a vehicle, because those LED lights can cause issues. So one of the breakout boxes I've had for a very long time is this Blue Point one. Um, you know, Blue Point from Snap-on, but of course it's Blue Point, so I don't know who actually makes it. But this thing I've had for years, it's been pretty good, and there's no LED lights in it. While I do like the LED light one because I can plug it in and I can re see real quick, do I have ground on both pins? Do I have power on pin 16? <coughs> and I can see things like that. It's nice for a visual. If I'm actually going to pull out a scope and, like, you know, poke and prod at things... I actually want to use something like this, but is what we're going to use this for today for is we're going to use it so we can measure our uh, resistance between pin 6 and 14. And that's one thing that you'll probably use this a lot for in CAN uh, diagnostics is you want to check between pin 6 and 14, check your resistance, and that way you can make sure you have terminating resistance on the network. But I'm going to show you how that's done and show you the importance of that while we're bench flashing. Now we have everything hooked up right we've got our PCM hooked up into our bench harness and then is what we've done is we've just plugged our breakout box into our bench harness set up here right and is what we're gonna do is we're gonna check for terminating resistance we need 60 ohms on the network to program this PCM 
Um, if it's at 120, you may be able to pull a vent and stuff out of it like that. But if you go to do any hardcore work, it's going to have echo issues and things like that. So, is what we'll do is we're going to turn this and we're going to put it to ohms, right? And we're just going to test to see where we're currently at. So, is what I'll do is I'll take one of these and I'll just stick them right here in 14. And then I'll take one of these and I'll stick them in 6 and I'll see what, what it says. So, is what it's saying now, it's saying 120. So, is what it means is if we have 120 ohms and we need to drop it to 60 ohms, we need to add another 60 ohms to it. Now, this actually has a switch built in here on the side for terminating resistance but also you remember we got this little resistor so let's say you didn't have that little switch you could take a resistor and you could go from side to side so now if we take 120 ohms and we add it to 120 ohms it's bringing us down to 59.7 or basically 60 ohms right and that's the way it works you just add another resistor into the network there but luckily we've got a switch so all we've got to do is just flick that switch on and it's going to go ahead and pull it down it looks like it's maybe pulling it to 71 or something like that i think i tested it when i turned it on and turned it back off it came back down to 60 the resting did yeah as you see it came to 62 and a half now one thing you do want to watch though is don't do this with the key on because if you have the key on this resistance, you know, could be all over the map. There's no telling where it's going to be. Usually it will move around, but for some reason, of course, when I want it to move around and show you, it's not going to, right? So, we turn that off, and you can see our resistance comes back. I'm going to turn that off. It goes back to 120. If I unplug the ECM, we have zero resistance between can and high, right? So that there is what you need to do. You need to aim for 60 ohms and get there that way. But also this test here that I'm doing here, this can also be used for a network diag because most of the time, or at least I'll say in a GM, right? Because every vehicle is a little different. But the way GM does it is they put the very foremost modules have the terminating resistor in them. So you'll usually have one at the bumper there would be a resistor um, somewhere in the back of the vehicle and somewhere in the front of the vehicle, say in the ECU. So if you plug up to a car and you've got 120 ohms between 6 and 14, that's a dead giveaway. You've got some kind of issue on the CAN network. And maybe you've got a bad module, a bad terminating resistor, or you've got a broken wire somewhere. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video about bench flashing, right? And I know we didn't go crazy into it and we didn't cover every single possible thing that there could be. But we just covered some of the basics, right? And, and just covered some of the things that you're going to need to know. One of the most important things, though, I can say when it comes to bench flashing is going to be terminating resistance. This little guy right here, these little things, these resistors can cause you more issues than any other thing. The LED lights, now those do cause issues in the boxes because they sometimes do cause clipping. Some people have no problems and it's probably just the modules you're doing. You could probably do 100 modules and never run into an issue until you hit that 101st one, right? So that's just some things to look out for. It depends on how much of this you're going to do. But one of the great things about ECU Hero is, is that you really don't have to bench these modules. Because... ECU Hero is designed to be used by OBD in car. The only time you're really going to need to put something on the bench is, well, if you have a 2018 up and you don't have a way to bypass the gateway, that would probably be a reason. But other than that, it's better off just to leave it in the car because chances are, if you've got a good CAN network in the vehicle and it's terminated correctly, then you're not going to run into any issues. But once again, thank you very much for taking that time out of your day to watch this video. And remember, if you want to be a hero, head over to ecuhero.com and pick up our software.